Before I get to the video, I just want to put it out there. Well, something I didn't do during my Ida video that I very much regret. I have gotten a few messages from my trans viewers, who I will not name, saying they are being harassed for liking my content and for being themselves. I just want to say that you will always have a place on my channel, regardless of who you are. Sure, I review shows that make fun of people, but there is a difference between using that mocking as a license to harass people and just realizing it's a joke not meant to be taken seriously. You shouldn't be shamed for who you are or something that you like. And just to everybody out there, regardless of gender identity, if you're in a dark place or just need to hear it, let me say, I love every one of you in a non-weird way. You are loved, you are wanted, and you got this. Now on with the video. This is Mr. Garrison. Oh, only it isn't Mr. Garrison. It, he's a woman now. Hello, everybody! I don't want to do this. You can do this. I, I don't want to do this. It's for the viewers, kitty. Please, Catherine, I'm gonna bomb at this. Look, you're gonna do it because this intro is long enough as is, and I'll be there with you every step of the way. Therefore, I took the liberty of inviting a little friend over to help out. After all, when it comes to rep, you're the one who says the group they're representing has the first say. Now, please tell us a little something about yourself. Lily. Hi, I'm Lily Simpson. I am a trans YouTuber professionally analyzing trans representation within TV and movie and amateurly doing everything else. Lily Simpson? Catherine, you're amazing. I know I am. Lily, I watched your King of the Hill video and you're the best Lily on YouTube. Okay, I'm more confident. Hi, I'm Kitty Monk and I'm here to talk to you about South Park or more specifically, the big whammy, Janet Garrison. One of Mr. Garrison many quote-unquote phases. Normally, I don't use this phrase when it comes to LGBT topics, but Garrison, they were the one who put out the implication. Speaking of, Lily, have you seen South Park? I've watched the entirety of South Park from start to finish multiple times, as I was a rather edgy teenager and that sort of comedy appealed to me at that age. As far as my opinions on South Park go, I don't particularly like it, as I find the kind of content that it does particularly offensive to trans people, specifically in regards to its use of satire and mockery around the community in a way that doesn't recognize the complexities of the issues at play and merely just creates a derision of them. Oh, but thank you for still doing this. Now the reason it took so long to make a video on Janet is I did not think I was capable of doing it. I'm not trans. What if I screw up or say the wrong thing or I'm so worried I'm going to offend that I screw up or don't say the right thing? But from the comments I got on my Ida video, maybe I'm good to go. And for those of you who gave feedback, thanks for that. Okay, with Lily in tow, we're gonna go Hedwig and the Angry Inch on this character. Dude! What, Catherine? I like the musical. So, let's discuss. Throughout the show, Mr. Garrison often struggled with his identity. There was an entire arc during season 4 and 6 where he got fired and rehired. And during that time, he came to terms with being gay. But I already made a video about that way back when, so I'll pass the baton over. Lily, what do you think about Garrison? My opinion of Mr. Garrison slash Mrs. Garrison, that's rather a complex issue there because obviously they transition and then detransition outside of that transition arc is that they represent a character who often falls into this mockery role playing a gay man prior to their transition who often engaged in hyperbolic acts of that community such as the Mr. Slave relationship and the hamster gerbil thing as well as being the Donald Trump role model after the transition as part of some big scheme that was ultimately going to end up with them going back to the school and to the town, but then Trump won, so now they ended up becoming a guy who was going to nuke Canada. <laughs> Oh. Okay then. During season 9, Mr. Garrison was put back into focus again. During the episode, Mr. Garrison's fancy new face, yes thank you Catherine, it's pink and luscious and purrs like a kitten. One day, out of the blue, Mr. Garrison is at a clinic trying to get gender affirmation surgery. Why? My whole life I've been a woman trapped in a man's body. A change operation is my last chance at happiness. <sighs> 
Let's put a pin in this, shall we? The doctor performs the surgery graphically and on screen, which I don't think we needed to see beyond being told what happened. I think if more people could just see a sex change operation, they would know how perfectly natural it is. Do I look like a woman? Pretty much. Just saying, Woodland Critter Christmas did this way better, and they were talking about abortions. They just went the cartoony route of animating it, or only showing what happened from the waist up, and even made it a somewhat heartwarming montage. It was great. Unless you played Stick of Truth, I did not. Shortly thereafter, Mr. Garrison is now Mrs. Janet Garrison. Hello, boys! It's me, your teacher, Mrs. Garrison. I'm experiencing womanhood for the first time in my life. See you in class. Obligatory. Damn it, Janet. I love you. Okay, Lily, what do you think of Janet Garrison? As far as my opinion of the transition arc itself goes, I would say that it really does continue the role that Garrison fulfills in the show. The trans stuff is effectively utilized in a way that doesn't give them any depth, and merely just plays up to the most obvious stereotypes and comedy of that role, with regards to their desire to have an ability to get an abortion and stuff that when they find out they can't do, they realise they're not a real woman, according to the doctor on the show, and a whole host of other things such as the scissoring lesbian episode. And then finally, of course, them just saying, I don't want to be a woman, this sucks, and then detransitioning because of that. There's no real assertion of gender identity or any sort of connection to a gendered role, it's just Garrison wanting to be something in a way that seems to be mostly desire-ridden. And not desire tied to euphoria, desire tied to this rather disgusting notion of male interpretation of womanness, of a masculine interpretation of femininity. Oh, that bad. Well, I think I get it. What made Mr. Garrison's coming out arc so great for me was how built up it was. Up until that point, Mr. Garrison was always ridiculed by the townsfolk for being so obviously gay that even a Texas blind salamander could see it. He wasn't fooling anybody, is my point. And when he finally admitted it to himself, it was so great. You hear that, everyone? I'm gay! I'm gay! I'm gay in it! And it feels good. Even if he got fired. With you, I'd like to go back to teaching the third grade. Oh, I'm sorry. We don't hire gay people. <laughs> but they did hire him back eventually. Here, Mr. Garrison just decides out of the blue that he's always been a woman trapped in a man's body, which did not realize is a phrase still used today, but mostly by older trans people. Really, there's no rhyme or reason to it. He didn't have some grand journey of self-discovery or anything like that, which could make the surgery seem relatable, realistic, or like some grand finale he earned. Honestly, this episode to me kind of suffers from when it aired. Not because it was a different time, but because South Park was primarily episodic back then. If this was the newer seasons, as in the 10 episode seasons, or yeah, maybe even the 6 episode seasons, they could have a season long arc where Mr. Garrison realizes he's trans. And of course, he's gonna want to live as his new chosen gender. He goes to the doctor, is told, Mr. Garrison, I don't know if you're serious, and the surgery is is expensive and your insurance won't cover it. But there are other things we can do in the meantime. First, I'll need you to go on hormones and start to live as the gender of your choice, or something like that. Just saying, they could use that entire season to satire trans issues, like cross-dressing, bathrooms, drag queens, hormones, book bannings. Then, in the last episode, he could show up to school one day as Janet to everybody's shock or acceptance. I don't know. Huh? topic, but a reason I like Tweak is even though he's a stereotype of everything related to anxiety, he's still relatable. Especially during Put It Down, where nobody takes his anxiety seriously and force him to bottle up until he just explodes. Maybe they could have made Janet more relatable. Lily, do you think this is a good course of action? As far as what do I think South Park could do to make Janet Garrison better, I would say that I think that's a bit of a misnomer sentiment, because 
in reality, the character is gone from that. They would have to retransition again for us to get Mrs. Garrison back, because they did a whole detrans thing. And I think that it's probably better that they just didn't bother doing that. They screwed it up once already, at this point it would be easier to introduce a new trans character and build from a fresh start rather than working with something that was already pretty flawed. As far as the issue with it, I would say that it just doesn't reflect good comedy written around the community. You can make jokes about trans people and satire about them, but if the satire and the jokes are ones that just lean into the already existing stereotypes and ways that trans people have been made a mockery of, you're not doing anything new and you're not making the audience think anything different than just what they already were thinking in a bigoted fashion. Mrs. Garrison does nothing but exist as a joke and that is a common role for trans people to be in, either jokes, villains, or victims, and Garrison kind of does hit almost all three of those notes in their time. You can improve this, of course, by having trans people involved in the process. Trans people can help to write or advise on how to write trans people better than a cis person could, but you can also just do effort to research and to think about the ways that people have done it in the past and to build on that. A great way to satirize trans people would be to satirize previous roles of trans people, to look at stuff like Silence of the Lambs and to mock that portrayal rather than mocking the trans person. This of course also ties into the can Garrison be more relatable is a big flaw within the fact that the trans community doesn't connect to them, and I would say that they were never intended to be connected to. The trans community was never meant to feel anything for Garrison or meant to see themselves reflected in that journey. It was ultimately built, designed, and crafted for the cis audience to have a laugh at, to have a joke with. There are other characters that are done in that way that are meant to be related to by the community, that are meant to be a satire they can enjoy but Garrison isn't playing that role. In much the same way that I don't think gay people probably looked at pre-transition Garrison and felt like, oh, there's something that I can have a good joke at as well. Oh well, there goes that idea. Oh well. Mrs. Garrison meets the boys, and they are kinda shocked. You guys, Mr. Garrison has fish. However, I've said it before, and I will say it again, there is one moment where the episode shines that they really needed to focus in on more. During dinner later that night, Kyle tells his parents about his teacher transitioning, and while Gerald is thinking of homeschooling his sons, Sheila has another course of action, education. Gerald, that is very close-minded of you. You shouldn't judge people who want to change. He's a teacher. How are we supposed to explain this to our children? And gently telling Kyle in a way he understands why trans people exist, and that they aren't freaks or anything like that. Sometimes a person's outside doesn't reflect who they are on the inside. They can have a surgery that makes them more into the person they see themselves as. I totally understand. Which for Sheila, considering how she acted in episodes like Conjoined Fetus Lady, is pretty big of her. In the meantime, Mrs. Garrison loves living life as a woman. Ugh, if only it were that easy. However, this is Garrison. Wow, just look at all these tampons! Regular heavy flow. Oh boy, I can't wait till I get my first period! First off, we get an actually touching moment where Mr. Slave leaves her, because now that she's transitioned, they are incompatible. Well, I assumed you supported me. It's still me, but I'm gay. I don't like <laughs> Admittedly, this is sad, but I do like how he says it with the same enthusiasm as he doesn't like it when his peas and his mashed potatoes touch. But seriously, that just makes it worse. How spur of the moment was this? Why did she not tell him, her own partner, about this life-changing decision? Don't you even care that I was suffering? I wasn't happy the way I was! It's great that you feel better, but you never stop to think about how the people around you would feel. Don't worry, this will be important later. Instead, Mrs. Garrison's version of being a woman, or probably more like spiting Mr. Slave, is going around and sleeping around. Wait, what? My boyfriend walked out on me, but I've been living it up ever since, having sex <laughs> with all kinds of different guys. Girl power! <sighs> You know what? I said it in my Ida video. If you just had gender affirmation surgery, or at least male to female, though I assume it's probably the same for female to male, your log floon cannot see any action for at least 12 weeks post-op, or it will look like uncooked taco meat covered in spaghetti sauce, I'd assume. Come on, after birth, you can't do it for six weeks. Granted, I will say that most of this is kind of in character 
character would garrison, who was already loud and proud. This is the same character who thought that because their father never committed any kind of abuse towards them in that nature, it's a sign he wasn't a loving father. Mrs. Garrison soon discovers that she hasn't gotten a period yet. You know, the strange thing is I haven't gotten my period yet. Is there a reason a woman might miss her period? Like, no offense, sis, but I think you gotta wait at least a month for a period to happen. How long has it been? Like a day? Maybe two? Oh my god. Of course. I haven't gotten to experience a period because one of those truckers I slept with got me knocked up. Yay, a new chapter in your life. Oh boy, now I can have an abortion! Oh, uh, okay, your decision. Wait, so does that mean you only transition so you could get pregnant and then have a doctor scramble the baby's brains? Even though at that point you probably just get pills because you're early? Why didn't you just make an um hum um 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 let Mrs. Garrison goes to the doctor. Kitty, like Luke Combs, just dropped a new album where she discovers she cannot have the procedure. No, I mean you're physically unable to have an abortion because you you can't get pregnant. But I missed my period. You can't have periods either. And this is where it happens. I paid $5,000 to be a woman. This would mean I'm not really a woman. It's, I'm just a... I'm just a guy. Basically, yes. Okay, one thing I liked about Ida, well, that most people told me they liked about Ida, was that if it weren't for everybody else mocking her and the show just letting those comments hang in the air, aside all that, she was still a decent person, even before the procedure. To be fair, once again, while I do think that everything Mrs. Garrison is doing is in character, it's still leaves a horrible implication. Because if you say, This would mean I'm not really a woman. It's, I'm just a, I'm just a guy with a mutilated ass. To any trans person in real life, they will probably hit you. I think what could have improved the scene is if Mrs. Garrison said that, because trans or not, she is a very close-minded person, and then the doctor or whoever could say, so what? Deep down, do you think you're a woman? Do you feel like a woman? Yes. Then that's all that matters. You're still a woman. And hey, progress is always happening. Hormones are a big thing nowadays. You don't always need surgery if you don't want it or can't afford it. And I was curious, apparently some trans women who are on hormone replacement therapy can indeed get periods or at least symptoms similar to a period. They just can't menstruate with like blood and all that. And while some trans women might want to get periods, some might be comfortable not having them. Mrs. Garrison now wants to transition back, but too bad that she can't because her huevos are now being used by Kyle. To fashion new knees for a little boy who wanted to be tall and black. You what? Kitty, this is the second time in a row you used eggs in a video. Is there something you want to talk about? I don't know. Maybe a Princess Bride reference? Anyhow, earlier in the episode, Kyle thinks that because Janet transitioned, he should be allowed to as well, into an African American. Alright, Dad! Dude. Which is very different because race and ethnicity are based on ancestry and a whole bunch of historical factors. I still think it's a huge missed opportunity they never had an episode on Rachel Dozel. Oh, and Gerald transitioned into a dolphin. Look, Ike, your daddy's a dolphin! Wait, I'm sorry, he didn't really become a dolphin, and Kyle didn't really become African American. They just look that way, because that's the same with Mrs. Garrison. All I did is change my appearance to look the way I felt. Speaking of, I don't know where else to put it, but part of me wants to share a critique I had about Heather Swanson. Looking back at it, I don't think Matt and Trey were trying to mock trans athletes or imply anything. They just wanted to challenge PC principal and strong woman. I'm pretty sure Bored Girls was their throwaway episode, where they don't make any sort of point. They just have fun with the topic. I just hope I can motivate little girls out there. Motivate them to understand that I will beat 
them at any sport they try. However, if that's what they're trying to say, we don't really mean it, we just want to have fun, they could have added an actual trans athlete who, unlike Heather, transitioned and had to fight tooth and nail for acceptance. And perhaps because they see through what Heather is doing and because this is South Park, that character could be called a self-hating transphobe or something like that. Here, they could have done the same when Mrs. Garrison, which I feel like they kind of later do in D. Yikes. Janet could meet another trans woman who is comfortable with the skin they're in. Perhaps they could be called Loretta. And even if that person can't have babies or periods, who cares? They don't want to have kids and they're just happy they got to transition. Or it could be like Thomas from Le Petit Tourette. However, before Mrs. Garrison can get to her old huevos, the impossible happens. Um, ouch? Well, the doctor decides to allow Gerald and Kyle to transition back, the same cannot be said for Mrs. Garrison. You know what? I'm okay. Even though I'm not truly a woman, I think I still like the new me. So we got her for a good long while. I think about two or three seasons around there. However, still, that's to say, could Mrs. Garrison have worked? Remember when Mrs. Garrison went to a lesbian bar and the other members were actually reasonable compared to her? Or it's a recurring idea that Garrison is conservative and yet she's still LGBT. Couldn't that be something the show could touch on? I mean, American Dead had a really great episode about log cabin Republicans through Greg, and that episode got nominated for a glass award. Lily, what do you think? I don't think it's wrong or a problem that they were conservative and trans, much like they were conservative and gay, because I think that's actually a useful thing for showing that the community isn't monolithic, that trans people can have a variety of identities and attitudes and beliefs, and they aren't all just progressive SJWs with coloured hair. You know, that that's me, admittedly, but I'm not all trans people, you know. There is a bunch of different people in there. One of the most famous trans people of all time is Caitlyn Jenner, who is a conservative trans person. Buckle up, buckaroo! Now, does that mean she's not trans? No, she is trans, but she's also, you know, has beliefs that are very different to what you might perceive trans people as having. Doesn't make her a better trans person, doesn't make her a worse trans person. And I think it is useful for shows to portray trans people across the political spectrum in that regards. I guess we can also use this chance to define the word offensive. Many people don't mind South Park because, at its core, it's meant to be offensive. So we shouldn't critique Garrison on that merit. However, the reason we can't ignore South Park 98% of the time is because even if they're trying to be offensive, either it's funny or it makes you think. Or you can tell they aren't serious. You don't get that same feeling with Janet. And it leaves you with a lot of unfortunate implications. Think about it. With Tourette's, they actually took the time to explain what it was outside of myths. Here, they just say, I I'm just a guy with a mutilated- <laughs> Basically, yes. Again, the whole it's meant to be offensive angle doesn't just wipe away criticism. Heck, there have been times where I have been labeled a PC baby just for trying to discuss an episode with people. What do you think, Lily? This ties into the satire at the heart here, which is a big thing that South Park fans get stuck on, because it's satire and therefore their argument is often that it makes fun of everybody and therefore you can't get offended by it, or if you do get offended by it, or critically analyze it in a negative fashion, you are a baby or you're just unable to take a joke. And I think a flaw with that interpretation is it doesn't give any sort of room to understand that satire does need to be good. It does need to be smart for it to function. A classical piece of satire we fall back to, of course, is Jonathan Swift's A Modest Proposal, wherein the position is not one that laughs at the poor people because he's saying that they should eat their children, but in the fact that the rich people are enacting policies that are effectively the same as that position. It's a mockery of the rich politicians in power who who are engaging in that sort of behavior, especially the English. Well, that's a nice way to put it. Indeed, yikes, oh crap, I just got that title. Mrs. Garrison had a date the night before, which went awful. I spent two hours getting ready for that stupid date, and when the <laughs> checks out my body, he just says, 
Hey, did you used to be a guy or something? I'm a woman now! Eh, at least Mrs. Garrison disclosed it, unlike Ida. And because she's a teacher, she takes her aggression out on her class, who are helpless to fight back. Oh, uh, this isn't good. Did I say something to you, sugar? <laughs> No, ma'am. I had a teacher like that. I think she gave me a lifelong hatred of the sciences. For this, Mrs. Garrison forces the kids to do weekend homework, even though only half the class is made up of boys. It's like punishing the girls for plain existing. I am assigning all of you weekend homework. You are going to read Hemingway's book, The Old Man and the Sea. Or, as it's known in Spanglish, The Old Man y la Mer. And because apparently none of the kids have ever heard of Wikipedia, this means they will have a crappy weekend. If you do not have an essay written on Monday, then you will fail! Is that clear? What if Mrs. Garrison insists on direct quotes? Oh crap. Mrs. Garrison goes to the gym to burn off the misandry and meets another woman named Allison, with a Y, according to the wiki. Allison thinks that Janet is saying that she isn't into men and invites her to a bar with similar-minded women. What I like is, at the bar, the women don't really mind that Janet is trans. They just care about her character. Everything is peachy keen until Janet realizes it's a lesbian bar. I mean, really, I don't even understand how two women can make love. I mean, un unless they just kind of feed the fish. Well, I mean, you got a lot in the goodie bag. And I hear you got a mouth on you, girl. Rawr. However, after experimenting with Allison, this mellows her out. And she decides... Kids, I need to tell you something that you might find shocking. <sighs> I'm gay. Again? Unfortunately, I think this is only for like this one episode. However, there's a problem. The bar is being sold to Persians. They've sold the bar to Persians. Persians? Yes, Persians, Janet. That's literally what I just said. Of course, the girls are upset their bar is closing. The Persians, for their part, do come by to assure them that they aren't discriminating. That when this place becomes another club, Persh, you will all still be 100% welcome. All they want is to make the place really nice. <sighs> Awful. How dare you be polite. Worse yet. They will cover that bar in cheesy blue carpeting, white statues, and gold curtain rods to the point that you will want to puke. Is this a real thing? I know nothing about Persian stereotypes. Persian viewers, should I be offended or should I laugh? But I will laugh at the description, simply because I'm one of those people who often laughs at how a joke is said instead of the actual joke itself. Rather than allow the Persians to come in and redecorate, Janet says that they will fight back by believing in themselves. Actually, it's Lebeau. No, it's Lesbos. No, no, sweetie, no, no, the bar is called Lebo. But first things first, they must send a message. And that message will be, That's my purse! I don't know you! I don't know why you're being so difficult, this is crazy! No, this isn't crazy. This is Lesbos! Did anybody make a Sparta remix out of this? If so, please post the link. If not, get to work. Later, the girls start to line up outside of the bar in order to stop the advancing Persians. And a pretty epic shot. All right, come on! They can't stop all of us! <gasps> They hold them back valiantly, as described by the narrator. Finally, the Persians grew tired, and many wanted to go shopping for more designer sunglasses. They retreated. Yay, they won, right? Too bad this is short term. First off, of course the Persians are gonna go tell their boss, Xerxes. Rauf Xerxes. He sat atop a gold hummer, with customized Gucci accessories which only a Persian would think was cool. Xerxes? That's a cute name. And on top of that, you know they're gonna come back, probably with the police or their attorneys if it comes to that. Well that's great, Janet, but what now? We can't just stay here pushing them away our whole lives. I mean, duh. We can't, I think it's pretty fun. Some of us don't have the luxury of Mexicans waiting around to sub for us or the ability to work from home. Damn it, Janet. The other girls present the idea that they should do something more long-term, like perhaps gathering dirt on Xerxes. Janet is prepared. We all can work, see? All right, we need you to infiltrate some Persians who run Club Purge and dig up some dirt on the owner. 
Okay. Sure. Okay. okay. Yeah. You know, I was going to make a joke about how Janet is going to flip her lid if she finds out about the kids using the Mexicans to write their essays. But considering how the chat GPT episode had Garrison mention, who cares if people are using it? It's just a little writer's helper. I wouldn't be surprised if Garrison wouldn't care either way, so long as they submitted something. In off topic, I wonder if the Church of Scientology tried to use Mexicans to dig up dirt on Matt and Trey after Trapped in the Closet aired. They make the Mexicans look like Persians. Some gold chains and tons of cologne. Persian. See? Wow! Later, they come back with dirt. Did you uncover anything? Are the Persians doing anything illegal? Uh, no. But first, we gotta check in with Xerxes. I felt isolated, confused. And finally, I found a place that accepts me for who I am. Dang, Xerxes, you are tall. Or Janet is super short. Then it comes out. I know you're actually a woman. Women can't be the boss in Persian culture. Nobody can know about this. <gasps> is this true? Is Persian society patriarchal? However, Janet is able to compromise with Xerxes to keep the bar open. She can still own it and operate it, but if she allows it to be La Beau rather than another club Persh, then she will be accepted and loved, and everybody will know her name and be so glad she came. Better yet, they'll keep it a secret that she's a woman. Oh yeah, I should have said that first. Janet's got blackmail. In the end, and Xerxes has a fling with Janet, and the bar stays open. Yay! But things would be on a downward spiral for Mrs. Garrison. You're gonna go to hell! Doesn't that bother you a little? I'm an atheist. Aha! I got you, you snake in the grass! I found you out! However, Richard starts to fall for her, and they begin dating. And I think I should mention by now, Janet changes her mind at the drop of a hat. Seriously, it's like that. Be it something as major as her gender identity, or even her religious beliefs. At the start of the episode, she's against evolution on the basis of religion. Even though, as Stan points out, There could still be a god. Couldn't evolution be the answer to how and not the answer to why? But I guess we'll ignore him because he probably believes in a flying spaghetti monster. And is that spaghetti monster ethical? In seconds, she becomes a loud and proud atheist. Do you believe in a flying spaghetti monster too, Bubblehead? Come on you, you're gonna have to sit in the dunce chair. Later that night, Janet proposes the idea of a society without any religion, run by her and Richard. The world would be a wonderful place without God. With me by your side, there's no stopping you. And they succeed. Even though this society is still full of war, and arguably silly wars, as everybody argues what they should call their new society, but, 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 they did get rid of religion. That's what's important. However, after Cartman goes to the future, long story, watch the episode for context, he tries to get back in time by calling Janet, where he reveals to Dawkins... Exchange operation? Uh-oh. You're a man? Not anymore, I've been fixed! Dang, low blow, Dawkins. Kind of ironic your name is a longer version of something. But on the one end, I can kind of understand this more than Brian and Ida. Ida did not tell Brian anything, likely because either she was drunk in a swirling tempest of emotions, or she assumed it was going to be a one-time thing. I think she still should have said something, but the point is, Garrison's actions were probably way worse because she lied to Richard, No he was probably not going to be too keen about her gender identity. I'm sorry, but Mr. Garrison has passed away. Mrs. Garrison is the only person here and she's rather tied up at the moment. Still, I said it before and I'll say it again, South Park is so freaking prophetic. Speaking of, remember how I just said Janet changes her mind constantly? Eric, you've never been anything but a problem for me. You're taking that egg. And if you break it again, I'll break both your legs and burn down your house, do you hear me? Well, follow that egg also happened. Oh, that's why you were referencing eggs? Actually, no. It was a happy Gilmore coincidence. Mrs. Garrison is doing one of those take care of an egg projects, which I never had to do. Inner city education. You must care for and look after this egg just like a baby. If you break your egg, it means you have a dead baby. 
And if you kill your baby, you get an F. Just saying, I went to 8th grade with 100 girls, and 10 of them got pregnant after we graduated. We already had experience being mothers. However, this makes her remember the love she had with Mr. Slave, who, remember, broke up with her for transitioning. Which, I hate to say it, but I don't think they were exactly dating. They were more like Blitz and Stolas if they lived together. As in, they do the nasty, but they don't attach labels or file for health insurance or taxes or that. That stuff. Still, if Janet is the soulless in this situation, it could explain her romanticized viewpoint of everything. She decides to allow Mr. Slave to take her back. Well, wait, wait, it gets better. I've forgiven you for walking out on me and, uh, and I'm ready to take you back, Mr. Slave. Kinda reminds me of Hedwig and her husband. Too bad that he's both happily dating Big Gay Al, and they are engaged to be engaged. Mr. Garrison, there's something you should know. Al and I are getting married. Married? Yes, I just said that, Janet. What is with you and not listening when I give commentary? The governor is going to sign a bill to allow gay marriage to proceed in the state of Colorado. And to celebrate, they were going to marry shortly after it went into effect. Oh my god, you're just saying that because you're jealous. Jealous of what? I'm doing this out of principle to protect the sanctity of marriage. Out of jealousy, this causes Janet to regress back to that right-wing side of her and campaign on behalf of banning gay marriage. Just to show you how out there she is, even actual advocates against gay marriage, especially on the basis of religion, think she's going way too far. It's a living hell out of them! Come on, everybody, let's get some <laughs> and some trucks and have us a good old-fashioned <laughs> drag. <sighs> no. Against her better judgment, she files a petition and goes to appeal to the governor, who doesn't know what to do, mostly because his one compromise did not work. We'll have all the exact same rights as married couples, but instead of referring to you as married, you can be Buddies. Hmm, wonder why. You think kids can be raised by- I can't use that argument. There's never been a study done which proves that either way. She decides to give him that study by switching around the eggs and observing the egg cared for by the boys, not the girls, because per Colorado's elected official, well, like anyone cares about the fish. I do. I like fish. Of course, the eggs don't explode or scramble or crack. Not even in the face of Janet's taunting. Look at the freak egg! It has two daddies! Two daddies! Two daddies! Come on, class, let's rip on the freak egg! Two daddies! So she has to resort to drastic measures before the eggs are due to be presented to the governor at what Janet calls in our scientific, non-biased study of <laughs> having kids. She goes to an assassin. What do you expect me to do with it? I don't care. Scramble it, fry it, do what you will. It has to look like an accident. Dude, you don't even need explosives or guns. Eh, I guess it is nice to see somebody dedicated to the job. Because I don't have a lot of time, stuff happens and the egg is saved. Meaning Janet loses, but progress happens. Boys, I'm really proud of you. You've done an amazing thing for gay marriage rights. What did we do? Then we get a finale in the form of eek, a mouse. Yes, it's a mouse. Janet has been regretting her recent life choices. My whole life has just been one big screw up, you know? This <laughs> change was a big mistake, okay? This entire video in a nutshell. And then I see this person on Oprah. She's a woman, but then she got a <laughs> change and became a man, but... Then she got pregnant and is having a baby, which means she's still a woman all along. Well, the thing is, that person is still a man because pregnant or not, said person, Thomas Beadle, got pregnant not through traditional means, but IVF, because his wife wasn't fertile. It's an interesting yet somewhat tragic story. I totally recommend you to look it up, especially the aftermath. Speaking of Janet, are we ever really going to figure out why you transitioned? I was on a lot of painkillers at the time, and I thought it was what I wanted. Huh, I guess that explains it. Totally. Unfortunately, Janet cannot get the surgery because there has been too much down there damage. However, if she finds a willing and stable vital organ, they can do the surgery. Until then, she's SOL. The school tells her to stop projecting her issues onto children and sends her home to console herself. 
Uh, we think it's best you not teach until you get your personal life in order, okay? Oh, it's so easy for you, Mackie. At home, Janet sees a news report for stem cell research, which can make functioning body parts out of mice. Well, mostly stuff like ears and noses. I guess Kenny really did die for nothing. But a trouser arouser? Mayhaps. The balloon is grown, but unfortunately, it escapes. Really, there is nothing major to talk about here. Except for the subplot with Cartman, but that has nothing to do with this video. I reached... At the end of the episode, after all hope seems lost, the mouse returns to her. In the surgery is a success. Mr. Garrison is back. Mr. Garrison. Yay? Guess that was all for nothing. Was it really? True, he did learn something during his time when he transitioned. Because the key difference between men and women is that women can have babies. If you can't have babies, then you're a man. I have like 10 things to say to that, but I will condense them. Does this apply to children who most of the time aren't biologically mature enough to have children of their own? What if you went through menopause? But I think this dude says it better. Oh, uh, wait, uh, hang on a second. My wife had ovarian cancer, so she can't have babies. Well then get an AIDS test, Thompson, cause your wife's a dude. It's kind of funny this is like the one thing PC Principal brought up. Not that Garrison transitioned for silly reasons, but just this. A teacher who said women without wombs should get an AIDS test. Oh, I was a lesbian then. Well guys, that was Janet. Final, damn it, Janet. Part of me did kind of like Janet. A lot of what happened is totally in character for Garrison, who as a whole isn't versed on any kind of issue affecting his communities. But another part of me realizes why Janet was so disliked and that in a way, maybe she does deserve it. Another problem with Janet I did not get around to mentioning was the real life impact she had. The two thousands was an especially difficult time for trans acceptance. Trans characters were almost always the punchlines, and in real life, trans people had to hide their identities or be labeled as disgusting or immoral. TV should have been an outlet to help with acceptance, but nine times out of ten, it just kept putting out a lot of misinformation. And from what my trans viewers have been saying, Janet was a big reason it was hard for them to come out. To me, Janet could have worked, but there was a lot of stuff that needed to go into that. Perhaps they could have corrected her at times, or did more to challenge her. It was like they almost always got it, but then they either said the wrong thing or made the wrong implication. And it's sad. Normally, South Park is good when it comes to satirizing, but this is probably the one time it did not work. Good thing the sissy had Garrison use this arc to provide advice to the teachers about cis versus trans. Cisgender. It's the politically correct name for people who aren't transgender. If you identify with the s*** you were born with, then you're cis. In fun fact, that was how I learned the difference. For once, thank you, Garrison, and thank you to Catherine, and to Lily, for allowing me to interview you for the video. Go subscribe to her channel, she's very informative, and she often takes a look at trans episodes. Lily, what's a takeaway you want non-trans viewers to know? And what do you want to let trans viewers know? As far as a takeaway that I think non-trans viewers can have here, I would say that it's about trying to make satire that trans people can enjoy around them. Now, it might seem like that's impossible, but it can totally be done. Trans comedians do it all the time. It's just about trying to understand a way of doing the comedy and doing the jokes that doesn't rely upon the same old tired stereotypes, that attempts to negotiate around them or to do something interesting with those. We've all seen trans sex workers before, we've all seen trans monsters before, and people who are in some way evocative of pedophilia. We've all seen the presentations of trans people that show them as these horrific, gross imageries of men in dresses. That's all been done before. So why not try and build upon that? Why not try something interesting or new? There's only so many times you can do the attack helicopter joke before it gets a bit boring. And this is a case of it not being offensive, because once you've beaten a dead horse that much, it's not offensive to anyone anymore, it's just tired. And to trans viewers, firstly, hey, 
How's it going? You know, I I always say that I, I all the people that I talk to are, are equal in my eyes, but that's not true. You 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 lot are my favorite, okay? But don't tell the rest of them. To you, I would say that South Park is a difficult show to watch if you're trans. If you've got a thick skin and you don't really mind offensive content or content that would be uncomfortable to someone who maybe isn't so secure in their identity or in their place in the world because of the mockery and constant assaults and attacks from cis people, South Park is probably not going to make you feel better if you want to go for that. If you are comfortable, you can totally watch it and probably enjoy the other comedy in it. But ultimately, it's not going to be one that you're going to see good trans jokes in or good trans characters in. If you're hunting for that, this is the wrong place to be. It's a cis show created by cis people for a cis mainstream audience, and it really does reflect that. Thank you for that. Anyway, I wasn't told to do an outro, but I will do one anyway. If you like what I've said here, then that's great. I hope that you enjoyed it and you learned something from that. I'm Lily Simpson from the YouTube channel Lily Simpson. I talk about trans stuff like this and you can go there and see tons more trans content going back 30 to 40 years of episodes and movies and my interpretations of them and all that kind of jazz. If that's what you want to see, that's the that's the place to be. Other than all of that, thank you for listening to me, and I hope you have a great day. And a bye. Hey, aren't you supposed to be teaching school right now? The school had her substitute to cover for me. You must always first check for the lowest common denominator. She. Yeah, she. These guys are pretty good. Yeah, I think I'm actually learning something.